Hello and a big welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. And today it's a hands-on review for the much anticipated Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant. My thanks to Honeycomb for providing me with a review sample, the only stipulation being that I didn't do a review before the 1st of November. All opinions and views given in this video are purely my own. During this video, we're going to be having a look at what do you get with the Throttle Quadrant, how do we physically set it up, as well as a quick snapshot of the Quadrant in use in Microsoft Flight Simulator, x and Prepared Version 5.1. But really where I want to start is with my final views and opinions. If you're a GA, commercial stroke airline pilot, then this product is worth a very close look indeed. It gets my full recommendation and endorsement. When you balance the price with the quality, the multifunction nature and the number of accessories, handles that you get with this product, it offers by far the best bang for your buck. For example, if we take a look at the Logitech Stroke Satec as the closest competitor and getting a like for like comparison, we would need two throttle quadrants, the switch panel and multi-panel as well as the trim wheel, a value of over £320, compared to the Bravo's £250, and that's excluding the now defunct BIP panel. There's also arguably the Virtual Fly TQ6, but that's over twice the price and is a throttle quadrant only. That's not to say there isn't a place for the individual Logitech units. There certainly is. But for the more serious or regular flight simmer, this new throttle quadrant offers greater immersion, more options and greater versatility. Before jumping into the detail, there's one or two points that I need to highlight. At the time of recording this video, 31st of October, Honeycomb have not yet released the drivers for the Bravo throttle quadrant, although I understand release is imminent and certainly before the product ships to consumers. And hopefully once these are issued, it will address one or two little niggles I had with the unit. The primary one being that once the unit's plugged in, there's no power light indication, so you're not sure if it's on or not. Once the drivers are issued, of course, I will be doing follow-up videos in terms of full configuration. But for now, let's get started. You get the dual option mounting plate. It's the same as the one that came with the Alpha Flight Control Yoke. You also get two heavy duty mounting clamps. These are very sturdy and to be honest, a far cry from the Satec clamps. Of course, there's the main body of the throttle quadrant and that is connected by a USB-C going into the back of the unit to a standard USB port. In a very neat box and ideal for future storage comes a set of dual throttle, prop and mixture handles. One has an inbuilt toga button and all handles slide onto the main levers of the throttle quadrant. They're made of a sturdy plastic and my first impression were the handles were just a little bit too small. But once fitted on the unit, I found they were just fine. Size was just about right for me. These handles, of course, ideal for your GA and turboprop aircraft. It also comes with a full set of commercial or airliner handles. And I think that's a first for a throttle unit in this price category. You get a speed brake and flap, as well as four engine levers. Nicely modelled, again in a sturdy plastic. Once again, they've got simple clip-on attachment. And it comes with a nice spring-loaded reverser. The commercial handles are numbered to accommodate both twin and four engine combos. Stored separately in its own box. And like the GA box, they both close with a magnetic catch. Very nice touch indeed. Also with the Bravo Throttle Quadrant comes the necessary instruction manual. It's brief and to the point. Directs you to their website to download drivers which are not yet available as well as the customary marketing information on Honeycomb's partners. Let's take a look at some of these items in a little bit more detail. The desk clamps come with a wide mouth aperture, suitable for most desks or mounting points. 
Both clamps are exactly the same, so there's no left or right issues. Turning to the mounting plate, it has a number of seating lugs to ensure things fit properly, and in the center is a locking pin. The main unit fits into that and locks in. Fitting the clamps to the mounting plate is very straightforward, and it seats over one of the lugs. But if the clamping system is not suitable for you, you have another option. On the base of the mounting plate is a Microsuction 3M pad. Peel back the plastic coating and it's a sticky surface which can be pressed down onto any smooth and regular surface. You'll notice two small clips at the end of the mounting plate. These can be opened up. Mm, that one's just a little bit stiff. And they're used if you're using the suction pad. It raises the mounting plate slightly so you can get your fingers in to lift it off. It's important to keep this surface clean. Onto the main body of the unit and we've got the gear up and down lever and on the other side we've got a spring-loaded flap up and down lever. The gear up and down is a nice positive feel to it. At the top it has two rotary switches, one for autopilot and one for increase and decrease selection. The buttons along the top are also for your autopilot, heading, nav, approach, reverse course, altitude, course, and indicated airspeed. Just below that, it has seven toggle switches. And depending on your sim, of course, these will be configurable. Used in conjunction with the yoke, it will give you a wide variety of options available for configuration. Below the switches, it includes an annunciator panel. I was unable to test these as there's no drivers or ways to activate it. We'll have to wait for the drivers to check this feature out. The trim wheel's on the left hand side, and in terms of styling it's reminiscent of the older Boeings. On the right hand side is the tension knob, and this is where you can adjust the tension for the six axes included with the throttle quadrant. Each of the six axes has a rubber cover. It's a very flexible rubber and it's a pull on and push on. And it serves two purposes. One, it'll keep the axis clean while not being used and also gives it a nicer, more complete look. If you're just using two or three axes. I'm now just taking off the rubber covering from the axis. So we can have a look how the handles fit. We'll do the GA handles first and then the commercial handles. Black is throttle, blue is prop, and red is mixture. The opening in the handle slides over the axis lever, and they're shaped so that they only fit on one way. Don't force it or you'll damage it. Moving the lever up and down, the movement is smooth, and the tension feedback is consistent, something missing on many throttle quadrants. Taking a closer look at axis one, there is a clearly marked flight detent. And it's clear when you move the lever when you're in that detent. It's a positive stop. Moving past that into reverse, again a positive movement. I gotta say, I really like it. No more guessing where idle is. Let's now set up their handles in various configurations. This is a basic Cessna one. We've got throttle and mixture. Ideal for the Cessna 152. You could use the rubber coverings to cover up the other axes. Let's now have a look at a typical GA configuration with three levers, throttle, prop and mixture. Depending on your configuration, you could have that combination on any three axes. Let's now change a combination to represent what's typically a dual prop, something like their King Air, for example. Two throttle, two prop and two mixture. I like the way the respective levers are angled out of the way of each other. Well, that's a look at the general aviation handles. Now let's have a look at the commercial or airliner handles. We've got four throttles or power levers, I should say. Two point left and two point right. And let's set up a twin engine combination, typical of something like a Boeing 737. We'll start with a speed brake. This is typically on the left, so we'll put it on to axis number one. Now the flap lever, that's typically all the way on the right, so we'll put that on axis number six. There we go. Now choosing throttle number one, 
I'm going to mount the throttles in the center. There goes number one. And now I'm going to mount the second throttle. But I'm not going to choose number two as it's pointing in the same direction. I'm going to choose number three. And the white handle on the top can be rotated as it has numbers three and two on it. I've now rotated it to two and on it goes. We now have one and two pointing away from each other as is the case in the real world. Now pushing the reverses fully down to make sure they don't touch on the switches. And they don't. There's some good clearance there. Using the tensioner on the side, we can change the amount of friction required to move the handles forwards and backwards. As I increase the tension, the amount of friction is increased noticeably in order to move the axes up and down. When you're in a heavy, you want to feel like you're in a heavy. Let's now change to a four engine airliner. This time number two goes on number two. Looking forward to flying my Constellation in this combination. Oh, that pressure's a bit, I uh, need to loosen the tension a little bit there. That's better, that's more realistic. So that's a quick look at some of the commercial combinations available with the commercial handles. To my mind, this unit has an overall feel of quality to it. Just a quick demonstration of putting the covers on the axes that aren't being used. It clips over the lever with the lever fully down and then simply pressed into place. Quick, simple and sturdy. Nice touch, honeycomb. Along the traverse of the various axes, there are numerous markings. On axis 6, you've got the flap settings for both heavies and for GA aircraft. There's also areas for fuel cutoff indicated in red. Along the first axis, there's speed brake marks. And there's also an indication of nose up and nose down for the trim wheel. I should have mentioned earlier, there is a light gear up and gear down. Let's now put our unit together using the mounting plate with the clamp, seat it on the lug, and let's now start fastening it to our tabletop. Fit the second clamp and tighten down. If you're fastening to a thin or delicate surface, make sure you put a pad underneath the clamp. That's our clamp fitted and it's very secure. No movement at all. And now to fit the main unit on it. And you can see there's a recess on the underside that will fit onto the locating pin on the mount. There are further two lugs at the end and the screw locks will fit over those, securing the unit in place. So first of all, let's locate the unit over the mounting pin. And once located, we'll push it forward to lock it in. And once locked in, we will tighten down the screw locks at the back onto the lugs. And there we are, it's securely in place. The front of the unit protrudes over the front of the desk, making access easier. Going to Honeycomb's main website. Under the download section, we can see there's a download for prepared 4 and 5 and for FSX Steam Edition. But these are for the Alpha Flight Joke and not for the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. Apparently Honeycomb has been working with Microsoft and Laminar Research for drivers for Microsoft Flight Simulator and for X-Plane. Under the FAQ section, link in the notes below, we can find out dimensional information on the Throttle Quadrant, which may be useful for some in terms of will it fit.
Despite no drivers being available, I found it relatively quick and easy to set up in Microsoft Flight Simulator and also in X-Plane, including setting the reverses. Prepared version 5.1 was a little bit more of a challenge, primarily due to what is effectively an out-of-date interface. The Bravo Throttle Quadrant is available directly from Honeycomb or through their European distributors Aerosoft. I am aware, however, that pre-orders are already completely sold out and did so in record time. I understand that product will be shipping to retailers during the course of November with product going out to those that did pre-order late November into early December. Have you pre-ordered or do you intend to? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found this useful and informative. Catch you again soon and bye for now.